All right guys, so I wanted to go over five common mistakes that a lot of beginner whittlers will encounter when they're just getting started here. And the first one is usually they're using their knife as like a pry bar. And what this can possibly do is end up breaking the tip. Yes, you will literally break the tip if you use it as a pry bar. It doesn't take a lot of pressure to do it. It's because the knife is actually made of carbon steel. Now when compared to that of like a common pocket knife, these knives are usually made of stainless steel which has a little bit more flex to them and has is more forgiving when you're using um, when you're kind of abusing them. But carbon steel blades end up actually uh, being more brittle. They have a, a much higher steel hardness which allows them to retain a sharper edge for a longer period of time but in turn makes the whole thing more brittle. So as you saw there it easily snapped when uh, I, when I plunged the blade in and tried to pry with it. Now I can do that easily with like my regular uh, pocket knife for a couple of reasons. One, because it's a little bit of a thicker knife. Two, it's also a stainless steel knife and it's not as brittle as your uh, carbon steel knives. Now the second one that I see a lot of people doing is instead of cutting the wood like intended with the knife with the edge leading, they'll kind of like scrape the blade. They'll do it like this, um, thinking that it's going to smooth out the, the edge, but what you're actually doing is damaging that fine, fine cutting edge on the tip of it right there. Uh, now the reason why you don't want to do it is because these knives have a very fine, fine point to them. Um, usually between the realm of uh, 12 to 20 degrees uh, cutting edge. Regular knives like my flippity doodah blade here will have a steeper cutting edge which will allow it to have a bit more um, edge retention for more robust tasks but it is not as good of a slicer in wood as uh, these regular blades. So if you're going to be scraping along the side like this you're going to actually end up damaging that edge right there. You don't want to do that always with a whittling knife cut into the wood as uh, as the blade was designed. You don't ever want to start scraping it, you're just going to dull it out really really fast. Now another mistake that a lot of beginners will make is not actually honing their blade while they're actively whittling with it. When you're whittling with the, your knife you're going to be slowly dulling it out. So ideally you want to go and hone your blade every 20 to 30 minutes while you're whittling. And you're going to do this with a leather strop with honing compound on it. The typical color that you're going to see is green. Um, that's with most uh, generic or basic leather straps with honing compound. If you're using flex cut, you're going to see the flex cut gold uh, stropping compound. Um, they'll do the same exact thing, but basically you're just adding an extra, I should, probably shouldn't do this one, the tip of is busted up there. Let's use this one. So you're going to be just uh, removing a very, very fine layer of metal and refining that edge, making it super sharp, uh, keeping it nice and sharp whenever you're, you're carving, and just makes the whole cutting process a lot easier. So it just allows you to cut through the wood much, much easier. Now another issue that a lot of beginners are going to do is cutting against the grain. Now the wood grain for this piece of wood is going horizontal um, like this. So that means that it's essentially layers of wood going down um, and you can there's three different ways that most people will cut it. Uh, one is going into the, uh, or across the grain like I'm doing here and then going with the grain like I did there. So going um, down and through the different layers of the grain is an easy way to do it and then you can cut along with the grain which is an easy way to remove a lot of the wood. It's very easy. But the issue you're going to start running across here is if you start going against the grain as in you're cutting up and you're pushing the grain against the grain going that way. What this might end up doing is actually cause you to split off a whole chunk of wood. Now you may not have actually wanted to do that. So this whole chunk of wood right here has been cut off. Um, now if you're trying to remove a large section of wood that might be fine. But if you're trying to like, here, let's get this one all set up again. So I'm cutting down through the wood, 
and along with it here and I have this nice little bump going on right there uh, I um, if I wanted to smooth it out I would not cut up and against the wood grain because like you saw it will split it ideally you want to cut down into it and through it to help smooth it out so you can see there I kind of rounded it off a little bit but if I were to come back up through it I'll do it slower there it goes you can see that I basically popped off that that whole chunk of wood right there. You will notice it when you actually start um, going up against the wood grain and it starts catching onto it because the knife will start, you'll start feeling more pressure needing to be applied to the blade and then all of a sudden it gives. Now that leads us to the fifth and final issue right there because like I said, when you're going to be applying a lot of extra pressure to the blade if you're cutting against the wood right there and then the knife will go flying. Notice where my finger is at right here. It's down at the bottom. I don't want to have my finger right here, even though I plan on the knife going up this direction. If I were uh, cutting against the wood grain and the wood grain and the wood popped, my knife might accidentally go right into my finger right there. That would have been bad. Um, which is also why I wear these gloves because just in case, I mean, for me, I get into my wood carvings and sometimes I do forget where my fingers are, but always keep in keep in mind where the blade direction is going and get into the habit of keeping your fingers out of the way sometimes when you're doing a smaller carving it's going to be harder to do so even like if you're doing a a paring cut you want your thumb down here not right where it's going to be coming and impacting your finger keep your thumb down and out of the way that way if you do accidentally overextend you are missing your thumb altogether it's just safer um, and it'll help build good uh, knife handling habits. Now if you found the video useful, go ahead and hit the like button. It's a great and easy way for me to see if you guys are finding the video that was um, helpful to you in any way. And it helps me see what I, could, what I should make next. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good day.